Hi there, it's Dave Warner from Warner Epoxy. Today we got a real cool end table we're going to do, and uh, or a coffee table. And I'm here with Rich Cryer with uh, RK Designs. He's got a CNC router machine that we're going to smooth out this piece of wood. This is going to be a uh, pretty cool coffee table. We're going to uh, etch out the Great Lakes for Michigan, and we're going to turn it into a real cool coffee table. We got this piece all set, ready to go to be routered to get uh, smoothed out. So one side will be flat, so I can make a form. So Rich is gonna fire up his machine here, and uh, we're gonna watch this process be done. the wood level for flat now we're going to put the picture of the Great Lakes on the wood see where we want it all right we're back um, I took it home and I put a, uh, a seal coat on the top and we're getting ready to cut it and Rich is going to tell us uh, what he does and what he's doing here to uh, do the cutouts for the lake. Hi, I'm Rich Cryer from RK Designs, custom laser engraving and also CNC routering. Also do shirts. Uh, what we've done now is we've got the table flat, we've got it epoxy coated, we're going to do the cutouts of the inlays of the lake. So we actually cut the lakes out of the parts doing a contour cut. And it's going to be a couple different cutters because it is almost two and seven eighths deep. So uh, we're going to give it a whirl and see what happens. How long have you been doing this, Rich? I've been doing this for about uh, 15 years now. 15 years. And uh, the best thing, he's like a, less than a half mile from me and I didn't even know it. Okay, fire it up. Alright, So you're going to put the vacuum to it so that we can watch what's happening. Supposedly this process is going to take about 20 minutes. Um, we're a little concerned about how much wood we take out. Uh, the piece might warp when we're done, or it might break in two pieces. We have no idea. All right, here we go. over to a longer bit so we can get all the way through the rest of the wood. Uh, we put a uh, shorter one in so that we can go deeper per pass. Now this one here we won't be able to go as deep because a bit will flex. So we're just going to change this out real quick and we'll be right back.
All right. That is cut out. Let's lift it up and see what she looks like. Oh, that is awesome. Thanks, Rich. Looks good. Okay, now we're just about ready to engrave where the, the star is going to locate where the customer lives for this piece. So this is, uh, we're going to cut this little star out and then I will fill that in with probably maize or something like that to show where she lives since she's a Michigan fan. We'll probably fill that in with maize and um, that'll look awesome. So we'll be engraving this in just a second. I could have done it that quick. Alright, let's go up close and check that out. Now the fun begins for me. I get to go make a form and pour it with Crater Lake Blue. All right, I'm back. We are here today. We're going to fill in or seal coat all these edges where we routed out the lakes. So that way when we do the pour, it does not create air bubbles and get air bubbles between the wood and the epoxy. So I'm just going to seal this up. I got a quick coat from Stealth Coat. We're just going to run a rub a thin coat on all this edge and we're going to do this uh, three times so that we don't get no air in our in our casting epoxy when we pour this. Uh, this dries in like 50, or, uh, sets in like 15 minutes so I got to do this sort of quick and, and hopefully I can get it all done before this batch goes bad. So. Quickly get this on here. I probably should probably should have sanded some of these bubbles off. I'm not gonna read put another coat on them. Okay, today we're going to do a the first pour of the river part of the table. Uh, I prepped this board already. You didn't have to see me tape it. I just ran Tyvek tape uh, so that the, uh, the epoxy won't stick to it. So when I pour the, the lakes that uh, it won't stick. I am going to silicone around the lakes, flip it over and stick it down onto my board to hopefully hold in all the uh, epoxy. I am going to do layered pours. I am not going to do it all at one time. So that's why I'm going to take a chance and not build a form because I can't build a form tight around the circular anyway. So I'm just going to silicone around here, turn it over, press it down, and then I'm going to do my pour. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to silicone about an inch from the edge well, I thought I bought clear, but apparently I got white. All right, I went all the way around. So now I just got to flip this over, push it down, give it a minute or two to dry, and take my chances. Okay, so far so good. None of the silicone pushed inside. I was a little about worried about that in a couple places. So, okay. Well, I can see that hit there. feel like I'm taking a big chance here. Uh, I could lose all my epoxy, but uh, I didn't think I'd get a good fit and form anyway, so I thought it was worth the chance. So, here goes nothing. Okay, I am 
let it dry. So silicone should be set up enough. I mix my uh, casting epoxy from Stone Coat. And this is a uh, part A and part B, and it is a ratio of two to one. So I did uh, two part of uh, a, a casting epoxy to the uh, one part of the hardener. So this epoxy here is for three quarters of an inch or less for a cast. And this is two and a quarter inches deep, but we're not going the whole pour at one time because I didn't build a form to catch anything if I have leaks. So I'm going to do just the bottom you know, quarter or half inch. So the whole pour is going to be two and a quarter gallons of epoxy and as of right now I'm just doing just one quart. So I am going to add my Crater Lake Blue from Stone Coat and I do want it translucent. I do not want to put too much in. So we're going to add a little bit at a time and we'll go from there. So we'll just put a little bit in, I'll mix this in. And I, I've been mixing this epoxy now for about eight minutes. So the time I get this color added in, I'll be mixing it for over 10 minutes. And we did it all by hand because we don't want, we don't want to mix any air as little as possible. We want air into this epoxy because it's hard to get out when you're doing a cast. All right, I'm going to pour some out because I think I might go a little darker. We'll see. So I'm thinking we're going to be about that thick right there. I can see through it. I think we're good. All right, here we go. We're going to do a little bit of praying here that we don't have no leaks. Yeah, I love this color blue. Ooh. I might not even get a quarter inch thick. So I guess I'll be mixing some more. Okay, I got my next batch, batch mixed up. I got it a little bit darker than the first one. And I'm going to try to pour it, keep it in the middle to make it, give it more depth. Give it uh, a little darker center. And here we go. That is so cool. Give it a little bit of interest. Oops, I don't want to keep dripping that on there. Swirl it around, you can see the, uh, the effects it can make. Make it look like movement, water. Alright. Wow. Can't wait till this one's done. Alright, we're back and it is looking awesome. You see that blue turned out perfect. I had just one little dinky leak, but it didn't even come all the way off my board. So it held it in just fine. I'm excited about that. Today we are going to finish filling this pour. We got the super cast out, which is uh, a stone coat uh, super cast epoxy. So that, that can go three quarters of an inch up to whatever up to two now because we got about two inches left. I got a gallon and a half mixed up. We should do almost all of that. After we pour that we're going to add make up another batch and this one here we're going to do a little bit lighter than that blue. We're going to lighten it up to give it some depth. 
So I'm going to start out with just that much blue today. And then we'll mix this in and we'll see what it looks like. Alright, let's check this now. Oh, I think that's good. Alright, here we go. See how good I can pour in these little holes, huh? Too much air bubbles in there, but we're gonna get them out. <laughs> All right, I'll pour some more in. That is so cool. Always start your torch off your piece just in case you're dusting. Now that it's a little fuller, it fills up this side faster. I don't think I have to go over there. Shouldn't. Fills over there pretty quick. You know, it was lower, it was taking forever to get there. Now that it's full. You can start to see the depth already. That is so cool. Probably can't pick that up on video, but all right, we got another half inch to go. Okay, we got the next batch made up, and it's a little bit thinner yet, or not as uh, lighter. I mean, not as lighter blue. So hopefully, this will stay on top and. Give us even more depth. Oh, well, we didn't. Uh, we didn't make too much. <laughs> Guess we should have made more. We are close. I think I'll be next mixing the next batch, huh? <laughs> We're within, wow. Right there, we're all the way to the top. I have to put a shim under my table. Of course, I can't pick it up. Nothing, nothing better than a level than liquid. I can only assume that this side's a little bit lower than that side by the way it looks in here. So we're going to put a shim on this side and mix up a little bit more. So I'm going back to mixing. Alright, this one should top it off. I'm going over anywhere yet. Not yet. I'm starting to get some bubbling in this edge. Yeah, I think I'm starting to get over the wood here. That's good. A little more. No, it's not there. Hmm? 
Why don't you break the surface tension on that outer edge? You yeah, lose it all. I see the same thing over here. I'm over top of some of this. I think that's it. Cause yeah, I think I'm over. I'm, I'm high here. Well, it's not gonna hurt to have it low overflow, right? So when you sand just it down, more, just more. Just more. It's gonna, it's gonna sink in the middle. When it, as it dries, it's gonna sink, so it won't be this full. All right, well that's it for today. Uh, I will be back next time and I will sand this whole surface off and then we will seal the outside edge and uh, a couple coats there and then we're about done. Okay, we're back and as you can see, we did not get a good seal coat on the edges where we routed out the lakes. So now I got these air bubbles. So. Uh, we're going to repair them. <laughs> I'm going to show you how. Uh, I've never done it before, uh, but it's a, going to be a learning experience for both of us. I'm going to sand this all down first and get rid of uh, all the high spots and then we'll actually see where the air come from. We'll probably drill them out and go we'll get rid of them. So here we go. I decided to sand more than I was planning on, so I'm doing safety to put on my mat. Well, we got the sanding done, almost done. I got a little bit more to touch up there. We're gonna wipe this dust off and we'll be right back. All right, I was sanding and I wasn't getting there fast enough, so I decided to get the router out. So I routed out where all them bubbles were. So I got it all done, all the way around. I got all six spots. Didn't need to show you that part of it because there's nothing you can see in the camera. I was out of the way of the camera anyway. Um, so now we're just gonna blow this off and clean it and get ready for the, uh, the next pour. Now we're just going to uh, wipe it down with some alcohol. Man, I lost my ring. <laughs> I blew it off the table. Just rub this down a little bit, get the rest of the dust off here. And then we'll be ready to put the next coat on. All right, got it wiped down, and now we'll mix up some epoxy and pour this all these Great Lakes again. Get that last thin coat on here. And while I was sanding, I rounded off all my edges, so I'm now I'm prepared for seal coating all my edges, um, all the way around the edge, and then when I do my final pour the epoxy can flow off the edge and get all these edges done nice and pretty. So we'll be uh, right back after I mix epoxy. All right, I've been mixing the casting epoxy. This is for three quarters of an inch or less. Um, so we're gonna do that. Cause we're only gonna do like a, I don't know, an eighth inch or so here. Um, I might have to make two batches. I wanted to you know, not make too much and waste epoxy, so I might be making two batches because I didn't do the math to figure out how much I needed. Uh, so I just did 24 ounces, and the uh, Supercast is a two to one product, so I did eight ounces of the hardener and of B and uh, 16 ounces of A. 
and I am going to add a little bit of Crater Lake blue. Uh, I don't want much color in this. Uh, Crater Lake stone coat uh, powder metallic. Just add just that little bit and we're going to see what color it makes it. Hopefully we want it to be translucent so um, I don't want much color. I'll mix this really good, make sure we don't get no clumps of blue. I've already mixed it for about seven minutes. This is probably another three minutes. But uh, I, that little bit I put in there, I might have actually put more than I wanted. Uh, a little bit of color goes a long way. But it is pretty clear, because it's not going to be that deep, so it's not going to be really that, that thick of a color. Mix this up, make sure it's all no clumps in it. And then we will finish pouring these lakes here. We will have uh, links below for all the products I used in this. Uh, as far as what colors, what epoxy we used, and all that good stuff. So check out them links below. And if you buy uh, $100 worth of Stone Coat products, you will receive, if you use the uh, Warner as your uh, coupon code, you'll save 10%. I think it's 10. Right? $10 off. $10 off, that's what it is. So, thanks. I think it sounded wrong, but I couldn't. I'm in percentage. It's not wrong. So you'll save $10 on $100 worth of product. I still got some clumps in here, so I'm going to keep mixing. I'm pretty sure uh, I routed all them spots deep enough to get rid of the, uh, the air bubbles. If not, I guess I will redo it after I do this pour. All right, I don't think I see any more. Wow, is that a pretty color? My long crater really blue. All right, well, I definitely mixed up enough. I think we have it all filled up. All righty. I think it's time to Get some air bubbles out. Wow. It is amazing how deep that looks. Can you see how neat that is? Yeah, it looks really cool. Wow. Can the camera see how deep that looks? I don't know if I can get any more effects or not. Let's see if I can mix up some of the metallics and give it a, a swirl to it or not. I can see the ones I did from before. That is freaking cool. Yeah, for those of you that live close by, you'll have to come by and see this. This is so cool. 
I'm sure the camera just doesn't pick it up. Remember I always tell you to turn your stuff on facing away? I just dropped a piece of fuzz in there. I gotta dig that up. Remember, when you turn on your heat gun or your torch to face it away from your product project instead of on top of it, and I just blew some dust in my Just getting out the air bubbles from pouring this little bit. Wow, I just, that is so cool. That is just amazing how deep that looks. I can't wait to get it off this board, this Tyvek board, so I can get light underneath it, because I'm sure it's darker than I originally wanted it. I put a little bit too much in my first coat. Um, but I still think it's gonna let that light through and you're gonna be able to see right through this. Water, oh, I think, oh my God, this is amazing. This is just so cool. So we're gonna let this dry. And uh, the next thing I will do is I'll be seal coating the outside edge so that I can get ready for my final pour. All right, here we are. We're back uh, the next day, and this is looking awesome. Uh, everything worked out just fine. All my uh, air bubbles are gone that I had. I routed them out and uh, filled them in with my next coat of clear, or, uh, a little bit of blue. This is looking really cool. So guess what today is? I get to take this off the board and I want to I'll see if I can see through it, if it's translucent or if I made it too dark. Today is a big day for me. This is so cool. All right, hopefully this will pry right off of here. Uh, we got the, uh, the silicone down on this board. So hopefully I can just release it with a little bit of pressure. And we'll find out. Oh, it sounds like it's coming. Oh. <laughs> Look at there, it came right off. Woo! All right. What's that look like, huh? It's gotta look great. All right, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna put my tripods down here and hold this piece up and I'm gonna do some sanding. Woohoo! That's nice. Worked out perfect. Oh, I can see right through there. Some places I can see through. All right. Well, I'm gonna make a lot of dust here. So, I'm gonna put on a mask. Can't see nothing. Can you see me? 
That makes quick work of it, but it sure is messy. Leakage. My silicone did well, had just a little bit. So I'm just going to trim this leakage off and uh, sand this edge off smooth and keep right on going here. kept the epoxy in, but apparently the cleanup is not as easy as I thought it would be. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, but when I figure it out, I'll let you know. I'm wondering if I can clean that off with some sort of uh, acetone or something. I'm going to give that a try.
Got all that sanding done, boy that was a mess. I was covered, I had to wash my face and everything because I was a ghost. I was white as a ghost after all that sanding. But I got uh, my, my uh, seal coat mixed up. It's quick coat from stove coat epoxy. Uh, this stuff we're gonna put on really thin, you know, like one ounce per square foot. Uh, we're just gonna put it on with a shower squeegee. And uh, this will, remember the problem I had earlier with the bubbles in the river? That's because I didn't seal the edges of my uh, my lakes my, uh, good enough. I must have missed a few spots. So now we're going to seal the top and the edges so that I can do my get ready for my final seal coat on this thing. And then this will be done. I've uh, been working on this for a while now. And the customer's waiting for it. So I gotta get it done. I just spread this out. Well, I get the rest of this with my hand. Let's rub this in every nook and cranny. Seal that wood. That wood uh, releases air and the air makes bubbles and we don't want that. This quick coat dries pretty quickly, so you only can mix up as much as you can get on in about 15 minutes. Idea what it's gonna look like, but she's done. All right, get all the little nooks and crannies. I found that out. Got a little bit too many air bubbles in my in my lakes, but boy, you can't see them now. Good job, got them out. All right, well there she is. We'll let this dry. We'll let this dry overnight because uh, it's getting late. I wasn't expecting to do that much sanding today. And uh, it's getting late. Otherwise I'd stay and put another coat on this tonight, but we'll do it tomorrow. All right. We'll uh, let this dry, we'll be back tomorrow. All right, we're back, it's the next day. I saved you the boring s while watching me sand one more time. I think you've seen that enough. So I've already sanded it. I've already wiped it down once, but I'm going to do it again. We're going to wipe it down with our blue shop rig and some alcohol. Make sure we got all the dust off it that we can get. 
Can I spray some alcohol on on here? Well, you can see sort of how it's going to look, huh? Wipe it down one more time. Get all that dust off here because this is going to be the last pour. This project is done. All I got to do is put legs on it tomorrow and take it to the customer. And she is going to be excited. Can't wait to see your reaction. All right, I already got the Stone Coat heat resistant uh, part A and B mixed up for two minutes. And it looks like it's white, but it's really clear. It just looks white because it's all that air I mixed in with it when I was mixing. Uh, we'll spread this out. And you're going to see one awesome piece here in just a minute. Get all this out of here. All right. Let's spread this out. And then, as soon as I hit, uh, hit it with a torch and start taking out some of the air, you're really going to see how beautiful this piece is going to look. So we want to spread this. Normally I use a 1 8 by 1 8 trowel. Um, these small pieces, you really don't need to, I don't think, once you learn how thick the epoxy needs to be, because it's self-leveling. So it'll just flow along and level itself out. But we're just going to get it a nice even coat all over and then we'll let it flow off the edge. Alright, and we'll let it flow off this edge. I want to make sure I get this edge really good since it's the final coat. induced a lot of air into this piece when I was mixing it so it's going to take me probably three or maybe even four times to get all the air out. I'm not going to get it all out at once. I'm going to let the air come up and I'll just get it out slowly. Um, but this piece is going to look awesome. going to torch it uh, three times to get the air out, all the air that I mixed in when I was mixing it, and I will start the torch off my piece in case it got any dust on it. <laughs> As you can see, I got quite a bit of the air out. We can't get it all out at one time because I, you know, I mix a lot in. Uh, I will do this two more times. I'll clear this up. We'll show you the uh, piece uh, after I get all the air out. And then again, we'll do the final picture after the legs are put on. And uh, we'll be right back. day got it all made made it for Carla here and she is going to see it for the first time not through a picture, <laughs> not through a picture. and we all know all pictures in this just doesn't show so you ready here you go ready. on your table Ooh, look how blue that blue is beautiful that is so cool Cool. And, and, and the star is your saving, or you would not have this. <laughs> that, that means it's Manchester and mine. <laughs> she can't steal it. Wow, that is the coolest piece of wood. Good job, Dave. Thank you. Awesome job. That is beautiful. Enjoy.
I will. You know I gotta make another one. <laughs> I know. I get the first. Thanks for watching. Stay Warner from Warner Epoxy.